What's up Bears fam? I'm Dan Durkin. This is the All-22 Review and finally there's hope in Chicago. Justin Fields' arrival has completely changed the fortunes of the Bears and their future, but I have to say it's going to require patience and it's going to require time. Now I know Bears fans don't want to hear this. The city wants a winner. I share the sentiment. I get it. The Groundhog's Day vibe that has surrounded this team for far too long just needs to go away. But I want to encourage everybody out there to take the long view perspective when it comes to Fields' development. For once, the quarterback future in Chicago is bright. Justin Fields truly has the chance to be a special player at the position. And, you know, the, the draft's been three months now in the past, and I just still can't believe that the Bears are able to pull this off. Uh, I mean, he's easily, to me, the, the top two, if not the best quarterback prospect from this particular class. And just a little tangent here for a second. Time can become a really interesting enemy for some front offices because the more time they have, they have this opportunity to talk themselves out of or talk themselves into prospects. And I think this instance, it really worked out well in the Bears' favor. And the other thing about this is it's very rare for front offices to get a second bite at the apple. And so uh, Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy should feel very fortunate to be in the position that they are. So they really need to this time through make sure that they are building a system that's going to accentuate Justin Fields' strengths. So I have to say Fields is not a finished product. No quarterback coming out of college is. But as a prospect, he possesses everything you can't possibly coach. He has a very high ceiling and a very high floor, which is a great combination for the position. So what do the Bears need to do schematically to set him up for success early on in his career as he matures and advances as a pocket passer? We're going to get to that here in a minute. There's so much to like about Fields as a prospect and so many ways to say very similar things. So after watching his career at Ohio State, I've tried to bucket his traits into some larger themes. He's six foot three, 225 pounds, ran a 4440 after stumbling out of the gate. He possesses very rare athleticism for the position. He was a first round MLB prospect at shortstop and his baseball background shows up on several off-platform and off-script throws. He can throw it to every level of the field, from the pocket or on the move, and his lower half and upper half are coordinated and in concert. When you hear players, coaches, trainers, and scouts talk about him and his leadership qualities, holding guys accountable and himself accountable, leading by example, commanding the locker room, giving credits to his teammates, and displaying humility. Being an alpha with the it factor is big for the situation he's stepping into in Chicago. Fields missed two snaps at Ohio State despite an MCL injury and a crushing rib shot against Clemson this past season, yet he returned to that game and dominated to get his team to the national championship. And despite not having a single padded practice, he gutted it out against Alabama. He endured some ugly racism at Georgia that led to his transfer, so he has mental resolve. His physical and mental toughness is without question. Fields is highly accurate, as shown by his stats and some advanced statistics from Pro Football Focus, Football Outsiders, and other outlets. On top of being accurate, his ball placement is excellent. He hits his receivers in stride on the upfield shoulder and throws them away from defenders. You're going to see that throughout the clips I'll show you in this video. Hand-in-hand hand with his accuracy and ball placement, he has plus arm talent. This dude can really spin it. The ball explodes out of his hand, and he throws with touch, accuracy, and drive to every area of the field. He has room to grow here, but his coaches and trainers have frequently commented on his ability to immediately take concepts from the meeting room and bring them out onto the field. He's referred to as a coach on the field by his teammate. Ohio State used many middle read and sight adjustment routes based on the coverage, which is asking a lot of a college quarterback, and he excelled. His productivity is exceptional. 
He averaged a passing touchdown for every nine throws he made and a rushing touchdown for every 14 carries. Like any quarterback prospect coming out, he has several opportunity areas. We'll get to those down the road and you'll see some in just the clips that I show you here today. But today's focus is about accentuating his strengths and tailoring the offense accordingly. I'm going to use two quotes from Ohio State head coach Ryan Day that he made on the Move the Sticks podcast to frame this discussion. When Fields transferred from Georgia, this is how Day challenged his offensive coaching staff. He said, quote, he's six foot three, he's 225 pounds, he's smart, he's really, really accurate, okay? Can we coach? Because you can't ask for anything more than this. So we'll find out what kind of coaches we are. I absolutely love the accountability in that statement, and I truly hope that Matt Nagy has the same perspective and repeated something like this to his offensive staff, because to me, if Matt Nagy and his staff can't make a talent like Fields work, it's on them, full stop. The second quote, when Day was asked about which kind of NFL scheme will maximize Fields' talents, he had this to say. I think early on, an offense that is run, play action, get them on the move. He's really good out of the pocket, controlled passing game. And as time goes on and he feels more and more comfortable in the pocket with third down and red zone and drop back passing concepts, he'll continue to just build. The more reps he gets at that, the better. But like anytime you have a young quarterback, I think things where he's on the move and athletic and give him the ability to make plays out of the pocket is going to be exciting to watch. After watching all of Fields' games at Ohio State, I couldn't possibly agree more with Day on this. Fields is deadly off of play action, which we'll get to with the film and the numbers, and he is not looking to check the ball down. He's looking for downfield shots over the top. The league is also going through a transformation of its own. Since Nagy's arrived in Chicago, per ESPN stats and info, the percentage of play action plays and the percentage of yardage gained off of play action plays has risen in each year and they're the highest totals in league history since they started tracking these metrics in 2008. Looking at Football Outsiders data, since 2018, the teams with the highest percentage of play action plays have ranked second, first, and second in points scored. So there is a correlation. The 2018 Rams, the 2019 Ravens, and the 2020 Buffalo Bills. For the Bears, after lagging behind the league in percentage of play action plays during Nagy's first two seasons, they jumped up to 31% last season. That trend must continue both to keep up with the pace of the league and also to maximize field skills, which brings me to my first point. The Bears need to commit to a play action based passing scheme. Per Sports Information Solutions, heading into last year's national championship game, Justin Fields completed 80% of his play action passes, averaging 12 yards per attempt for nine touchdowns and just one interception. Per Pro Football Focus, he threw 15 play action touchdowns in 2019. Play action must be the foundation of the Bears passing attack. They need to take advantage of Fields' physical skills as he learns to win both with his body and mind. Play action helps to move the pocket. It will change Fields' launch point. It'll create bigger throwing windows and help define his reads. The play action package should contain both a controlled passing package as well as shot plays off of hard play action. This first clip is one of my favorites as it demonstrates many of Fields' talents within a pro style play. From 12 personnel, which is one running back and two tight ends, Ryan Day dialed up a flood concept off of outside zone with a half roll to the top of Justin Fields' drop. Fields nails a hole shot against cover two, which has weaknesses up the sidelines over the top of the cornerbacks and up the middle of the field. What I want you to watch for on this play is Fields' post-snap read. You can look at the stripe of his helmet to get an idea of where his eyes are. He identifies the middle of the field as being open on this play. I want you to look at his footwork, which is three steps, a settle, and a hitch, how he anticipates the route being open, and above all, the ball placement. The ball's thrown to the pylon, away from the safety, and over the top of the corner. Receivers love quarterbacks who let them know what's around them on the field by where they place the ball. This helps keep receivers safe from harm and on the field, and in this case, for a touchdown. So let's watch the snap in real time. The second clip is the example of a controlled passing game. Pre-snap motion gives a man coverage indicator. 
For me, I need a better ball fake, but we talk, we'll talk about that later. But this is a simple sprint rollout off a of play action for an easy pitch and catch first down on a comeback. Take advantage of Justin Fields' feet and his ability to throw with accuracy and placement on the run. Another example of controlled passing comes off of this hard outside zone play action. This is a sprint rollout on a flood concept for an easy first down. Ohio State's just stealing yardage with Fields' athleticism and the Bears to do the same. Another tenet of play action is shot plays. When Ohio State got to the middle of the field, they were taking shots at the end zone. They wanted to take advantage of Fields' arm talent to put points on the board with one, one play rather than having to string together a bunch of them. So the first example of a shot play comes off another pro concept called Y-Cross, which is a full field read. I love this rep from Fields, so let's break it down. Post-snap, Fields sells the run action. Again, look at the stripe of his helmet. He's selling the read to manipulate the second level of the defense. His first step, stripe of the helmet down the middle of the field as he reads the safety for his coverage key. Second step, eyes still on the safety as he reads the safety's hips and drops to identify the middle of the field is closed and he has three deep coverage. Now he knows exactly where he's going with the ball. As he hits the top of his drop and slides, he eyes the deep post, knowing that the Y cross is going to create room for his outside receiver to work the deep post. Finally, he hitches and lets it rip for a touchdown. I love this rep, so let's watch it in real time. The second example of a shot play is a Yankee concept, which is a two-man route with a deep over and a deep post, but they convert the post to a go on this rep. The receiver sells the run action by feigning a block only to hit the nine and stack on top of the corner for a big gain. This concept is one of my favorites for fields, and I think about Allen Robinson and Darnell Mooney running it to perfection. The third example is another Yankee concept against Nebraska. Again, field sells the outside zone, half roll, and hits the over route. The final example is three verts off of a zone read bash play action, and another whole shot against Rutgers cover two. The pocket closes on fields and he still delivers a strike up the sideline to the opposite side of the field. This is an NFL throw under NFL conditions in the pocket. You love to see it. Under Nagy, the Bears have developed some formation tendencies. Per sharp football statistics, the Bears are in shotgun for 73% of their snaps. When they've been in the gun, there's a 73% chance they're throwing the ball. On the 27% of snaps they've been under center, there's a 71% chance they're running the ball. Those are tells for an opposing defense. Last season alone, the Bears were 80% likely to throw the ball when in the gun and 66% likely to run the ball when under center. They need to break those tendencies by running more of their playbook from under center, which is the second tenet of what I'm getting at. Quarterbacks with their back to the defense prevents the defense from seeing what's happening with the ball as he can hide it. This increases the chances of the defense making the wrong read. Making plays look similar for the first few seconds of the down keeps the defense in conflict about is it a pass or is it a run? And in a sport like football, split seconds really matter. Athletes move fastest when they're just reacting and not thinking. So making them think on the field slows them down as they're guessing and processing what might be happening. Here's a great example of both formation, motion, and play action from under center influencing the Penn State defense into the boundary to create open space for Ohio State in the red zone on a second and extra long to go situation. Ohio State motions into a three by one formation into the boundary. With fields under center, they run a flood concept off of outside zone play action. Focus on Penn State's backside defensive end who is left unblocked. Since he's left unblocked, He's the quarterback's responsibility, but Fields is able to slow the unblocked defensive end down by hiding the ball from him and then booting out the back. At the point of the ball fake, there are nine Penn State defenders on the opposite side of the field. This buys both Fields and the shallow crosser time and space to operate and sets Ohio State up with a first and 10 from the 12 yard line. Let's watch the play in real time from both the wide and tight copy.
The final area of focus is making outside zone the foundation of the running game. Yes, the Bears are going to need power and gap, but zone should be their foundation. It was last year and it should continue. Outside zone cuts the field in half, which reduces the number of defenders an offense needs to account for and attack. You can worry about blocking 5, 6, or 7 instead of 11 when you cut the field in half with zone. David Montgomery executes the scheme well. His reads are to either bend the play backwards or bounce it outside. And while he doesn't have the speed to consistently bounce plays outside, he can get north and south or get laterally to cut against the grain. What I like also about the outside zone is that hard play action that they're able to run off it and fields run so effectively. It stretches the defense out horizontally and it gives the offensive line a little bit more time to set up their blocks and the running time more time to read. If you stuck it out all the way to the end of this video, thank you. I know I went long with it, but I'm so genuinely excited about Justin Fields being a member of the Bears. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I truly appreciate the support. Training camp has arrived and there's plenty more content to come. I'm Dan Durkin. Thanks for watching the All-22 Review.